We're going to lift high our praise of our Savior this morning. Come on. invitation this morning. We declare the goodness of our God. We sing a little
Amen, amen. Well, welcome to North Star. It is so good to have you here in the house of the Lord. I want to take a second and welcome our Morgan County men. We are worshiping. We're standing with you guys. It's an honor to be with you and worship with you every week. And to those who are at home this morning, we love you. We count on a joy and an honor to be in your home or wherever you are and worship with you. Man, it is so good to come into the house of the Lord and declare the praises of our God. As we continue our time of worship, we're going to introduce a song that's new to our body. It's called The Goodness of God. And I want to maybe give you a challenge this morning in several parts, but maybe for those of you who have been a longtime believer, when is the last time that you stopped to consider the goodness of God? how he saved you, how he rescued you, how he calls you, how he knows you. For those of you who are new in your faith, and it might be a little bit easier to see, man, how God has called you and saved you. But I know for my life, it, it's good to stop and to reflect on the goodness of God and to take, take stock, take account, because I think far too often we focus on the negative and we forget to look at all that God has done and he is faithful. And I love this song because the chorus, it says, all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good. And with every breath that I'm able, I will sing the goodness of God. That's what we're gonna do this morning. We're gonna declare, lift our voices, and tell of the goodness of God.
together give me Jesus give me Jesus you can have all this world but give me together oh when I am alone oh when I am alone oh when I am alone give me Jesus come on we declare this together give me
Jesus above all else, God, we love you. Oh, we need you, God. Oh. One more time we sing. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. You can have all this world. You can have all. Good morning, church. I feel led before you go any further, just as the body of Christ to come together and to take a moment of silence and pray. So will you bow your heads with me? God, we thank you for this time. God, may the words that just resonated from our lips be true. Give me Jesus. God, we see all woven throughout scripture that our words have power. In Proverbs 18, 21, Proverbs 16, 24, I'm reminded of, of Hebrews 13, 15. That God, the tongue holds the power of life and death. And so God, I pray that as we say the words, give me Jesus, that it would refocus, it would recenter, it would reprioritize our hearts and our minds, that it would take control of the situations that we find ourselves in this morning. And God, that we would, for the next few minutes together, God, that we would be able to sacrifice and surrender the heaviness, the burdens, the pressure, the comparison, the loneliness, fill in the blank what you're going through, God. But we surrender that to you this morning. And we invite you to take over. God, transform our hearts and our lives. May we walk out of here differently than how we walked into this room this morning. It's in your strong name that we ask these things. Amen. Church, you can be seated. My name is Corey. I have the privilege of serving as one of the pastors here. So I want to welcome everyone in the room. I want to welcome everyone online. We are one church in three locations. and Our mission statement is this. We exist to bring glory to God by leading people to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. And we aspire to live that out in many different ways, but at its foundation, we want this to be a safe place for you. So whether you've been following Christ for years or maybe uh, you don't even believe in God and you're just checking out this whole thing, this is a safe place. And so what I would love to do if you're new in the room or if you're new online, we want to connect with you. And the best way to do that, I'm inviting you to pull out your cell phone and simply text the word connect to the number on the screen. If you're in the house and you want to fill out a physical form, there's a connection card in your seat pockets. You can fill that out as well. But one of my favorite things to do as a staff here at North Star is every single Tuesday, we take all of the prayer requests that are filled out online or via connection card anonymously or if you choose to give your name and we lift those up, we intercede on your behalf. I mean, this church was built in prayer. It's at the core of everything we do. And so it would be our honor as staff and leadership here to pray over you this morning. So if you can fill that out, if you are in the room, once you leave at the end of service to my right, as you exit the lobby doors, you'll see a place called Connection Point, And we'd love to get to know you, hear your story, and give you a little gift on our behalf. Well, today is an exciting day for me because this is the fruition of, of a prayer that's been existing in the staff and the hearts of our team for many, many months now. And so we're kicking off a brand new series called Into the Deep. This is going to be a five-week series. If you've been a part of North Star for some time, you know at this point in the year, we kind of give, uh, what's the vision for the following year? And so let me give you some context behind Into the Deep. It started out as an all-staff where Pastor Scott gave us a simple word that God had given him through his time in Scripture and his prayer life, and he titled it Into the Deep. And what happened in that staff meeting was only can be defined as spirit-led. By the end of it, people were crying and we were giving thanks to the Lord and we were praying over one another in expectation for what God was going to do. And that's what we get to present this morning. And so when you leave here today, uh, both of our lobbies, as you exit, you'll have an into the deep ministry plan. 
It's vision, and there are numbers in there associated with the budget, but much more than that is where we feel God leading us in 2021. So make sure you grab that. And then every single week for the next five weeks, we're going to preach through different passages of Scripture, and we're going to hear actual testimonies of life change. And so that's what we get to be a part of. We don't come here because it's the thing to do in the South. We come here because we believe in life change, not because of who we are, but because of who he is. And so this morning, we get to celebrate that in the house of the Lord this morning. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you for how you continually live and give generously. It's because of your giving that allows us to do not only what we do in this building, but our South Campus, our Morgan County Campus. It allows us to take the gospel to the streets around the city and across the globe. And so there are a couple of different ways you can give. You can give online through our website. You can give at our giving stations as you leave, or you can simply text uh, a number to give, and those numbers are on the screen as well. Well, church, we believe at North Star, we believe in the next generation. As a daddy who has three small children over there right now, I believe in what our leaders and what our teachers and how they're investing and pouring in to our students. Just out of curiosity, if you have a child, baby through 12th grade, would you lift your hands? Just want to survey the room. So the majority of the people in this room, you will never hear us use the words child care. It is children's ministry. It is student ministry because we partner with parents for the discipleship of your kids. And one of the ways we do that on Sunday mornings here, babies through fifth grade, then every Wednesday night, middle school and high school, on a weekly average, we have about 331 students every single week who come and they hear the love of Christ and are given opportunities to live that out and to own their faith. And this morning, you're going to witness and get to hear of one of those stories of life change. And so as we prepare our hearts and our minds for what the Lord wants to speak to you, Can you uh, just surrender whatever it is that you walked in here with and be sensitive to how the Holy Spirit wants to move and speak to you this morning. Would you turn your attention to the screen for me? brothers, mom, my dad in and out of my life a lot. Uh, Grandfather was a big father figure to me. I'd been going to this church for about a year and I got saved when I was in the third grade at an Easter service at the Tennessee Theater. I'd honestly recognize 2015 as a big turning point in my life uh, because that's really when a bunch of the stuff that happened that molded me into the person I am today really happened. Parents got divorced earlier, early that year. Uh, lost my grandfather, who, because of my dad being in and out of my life, when my parents were still together, was a big role in how I was raised. And then going into middle school, into my sixth grade year, I had this big ego. Like, I was really prideful. It had to be all about me. And during that time, I started to drift away from the Lord a bit. But because of that pride, I started to ignore my mental health. And I ended up taking a toll on me later in life, especially because early my seventh grade year, I had a tumor in my knee. But because of that, it really pulled me away some too, because I'm like, why me? Because all I would do is go to school, go to therapy, and really just from there, just being a dark hole that I was for in a while and several thoughts of suicide, uh, depression was bad, anxiety was bad. Uh, one night I actually was about to take my own life. So I had like written a little message, like final words on my phone and I had it maybe five feet away from me, opened and I was about to jump off a cliff because I felt that would be the easiest way to do it. And that's when I got the phone call. And that really helped me. Who was it that called you? Uh, My best friend, Beckett. 
at that point in my life, I mean, obviously I had people that cared about me, but when you're in that deep of a dark hole, you feel like there's no one you can turn to and talk to. So that really opened my eyes to like, there are people I can still turn to and talk to. I started going to church more and I, kept, I came back to going to Wednesday nights here. And for the first part of that, I was really that kid that just went through the motions. And one well, of my friends actually convinced me to go to summer camp. And it really just showed me how great God is. That is what I would say what brought me back to him and what has brought my relationship and allowed me to strengthen it. So my life group leader, Travis, he's been my leader since I was in sixth grade. So he's walked with me my entire journey. And I'd say he's also another big part of why I am the person I am today. I can go to Travis and he's always there for me. And honestly, life group leaders are some of the most important people in our youth ministry, especially in my shoes without like a good father figure in your life. You can go like any, without having any good parental figure in your life, you can go to your life group leader and just talk to them and they'll listen and they'll help you through everything like mine have for me. These past few months have probably been the happiest I've ever been because I got baptized a few months back, uh, been more involved with the church on Sundays on with the media team for NS Kids, like feeling calls to ministry too. I honestly think the youth ministry is a big part in the future of our church because like me, I, there's probably some other kids in that youth ministry that will one day be called to ministry and to be called to speak out and I feel like even with NS kids with our and even with our preschoolers I feel like our youth ministry is really the big building block future point of our church I know I'm not the only 15 year old kid that goes through heavy depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts. Me just sharing my story, I hope I can impact people. God moves in mysterious ways and he always leads you right back to him. Wow, what a powerful story of life change. Can we put our hands together and just celebrate the goodness of the Lord in the house today? Wow, thank you to William Bell. What a great story of life change and transformation. Travis, man, thank God for you as a life group leader who's been walking with him all of these years as well. A great day today to be in the house of the Lord. Let me take a minute to greet all of you who are joining us online in your living room at your kitchen table, having an extra cup of coffee, and all of my Morgan County men of God, we love you men, man. Thank God for you and your faithfulness. We know you're, you're missing us. We're missing you. Hope to be back there again in person real, real soon. So today we are starting in a journey called Into the Deep. Let me just kind of share with you the direction of this message series. It kind of came out of my own personal walk with the Lord. You know, every morning I'm up early. I get my cup of coffee. I'm sitting in my easy chair. Uh, I've got my Bible. I've got my little devotional book. I've got a journal. I'm just walking with the Lord. And so back several months ago, I came to this storyline in Luke chapter 5 where Jesus had an encounter with the apostle Peter for the very first time. It wrecked his world. And so it gave me fresh insight and vision. And so I started marinating over this storyline in the life of Peter. It was so significant in me that I felt like I needed to share it with our, our staff. We had an all-staff gathering here in the lobby of this building. And it was so powerful that day. A lot of life change was taking place. And Pastor Corey comes and said, Pastor, I think this is going to be our vision series for the fall. You know, last year it was a heart for the house. This year, into the deep. And so I just want you to know that these things that I'm sharing with you over the next five weeks are something just deep and profound that the Holy Spirit's been doing in me that I want to pass on to you as we walk together week to week in the power of the Word. So maybe you remember uh, as a child, the first time you ever learned to swim, the first time maybe you ever dove into the deep end of the pool. For me, I was a young elementary school boy, and it happened up close to Norris Lake at a place called Big Ridge State Park. Anybody know about Big Ridge State Park? A few of you in the house. And so we went up there about every summer as a family, and we'd get a little cabin there, and my dad 
I would encourage me as a young boy to wade out into the shallow water. So I'd play around and splash around uh, shin deep, knee deep in the shallow water. As I grew a little bit older, my dad would lure me out to a little platform that was right in the middle of the pool. This was a concrete swimming pool, but it had lake water in it. And so it was fed by the lake. The water was a little murky. And way out at the very end, there was a fence and there was a ladder and there was a high dive. And so as I got a little older, my dad would lead me out to the midway point of the swimming pool where the platform was. We'd climb up on it, jump off, and that's where I learned how to swim. But I'll never forget as I got a little bit older, my brother is three years older than me to the day. I always say I, I ruined his third birthday the day I was born. But we get along really well. It's a great relationship. But my brother, being three years older than me, was trying to taunt me a little bit, lure me out to the deep water, to the high dive. My dad was encouraging me, hey, go give it a chance. You can do this. I'll be here for you. So finally, man, all these emotions were going on in me. I was nervous. I was anxious. I was a little bit excited. And so I swam out to the very deep end of the pool. I got up on the platform. I started climbing that ladder that I know had to be 60 feet in the air, <laughs> probably about eight feet. You know, everything seems bigger when you're a little boy. So I climbed up the ladder. I'm standing on the high dive and my knees are shaking a little bit. My dad's there saying, hey, you can do this. So so I'll never forget that moment where I ran out to the end of the high dive and I, and I almost belly flopped into the deep end of the pool. I could not touch bottom. I could not see bottom. But when I came up, my, my heart was just full of joy and elation. Maybe you've been there before in your life as a child. But these are the exact emotions, had to be what's going on in the mind and the heart and the life of the Apostle Peter the first time he ever encounters Jesus in the book of Luke, chapter 5. So if you have a copy of the Bible, and I hope you do, I want you to join me right now in Luke, chapter 5. You can find it in your hard copy of the Bible on your phone, or you can track along with us at all of our campuses up on the big screen as well. Before we dig deep into the Word of God today, let's take a moment just to pray and ask for the Holy Spirit's guidance. Lord, we love and praise you today. Thank you for the sweetness of our time together. Lord, thank you for this place that we can gather. Lord, thank you for those who've all gathered around the globe online right now. Thank you for my Morgan County brothers that are gathering right where they are. And Lord, we know that your word says that where two or more of us are gathered together in your name, that you are in our midst. We thank you, Holy Spirit, today that you are our teacher and our guide. We thank you for the written scripture, the Bible, your love letter to us. And so I pray that today, Lord, that uh, we would not just sweep through this very familiar story in the life of Peter in Luke chapter 5, but God, it would come alive in us. And that you would speak deeply to us. Lord, that we would sense that this is a new day. This is a new season of our walk with you. We would sense, God, that you are calling us away from the safety of the bank, from the shallows into the deep with you. We pray, Father, that you would just open up our heart, our mind, our spirit to you, that you would do something so powerful, so life-changing, so significant in these next few moments that we would never get over it. Lord Jesus, we're inviting you to call us into the deep. We pray it now in the sweet name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You see, for the first time ever, a Peter was being called by the Lord Jesus Christ into some very deep waters. Well, I'm talking about physically in a boat because he was an avid fisherman. He grew up right there on the Sea of Galilee. He spent most of his life uh, in the depths of the Sea of Galilee, but spiritually. He sensed that Jesus was calling him out of the kiddie pool of life and ministry into the deep for the very first time. So I want to show you this and, and kind of unpack this, this verse by verse, as we set the table for the message today out of Luke chapter 5, verse number 1. It says, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, that's another name for the Sea of Galilee, said so the people, in verse 2, were, were gathering or crowding around him and listening to the word of God. Jesus was a, a majestic teacher. He was one who had the charisma of the Holy Spirit. He was the one who had power and anointing over his life. And every time he began to teach, crowds would gather and press against him. They wanted to get closer and closer, maybe just to get a touch of the hem of his garment. And so people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. And he saw at the water's edge two boats 
left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. And so let me tell you what's going on here. So Peter, James, and John, being avid fishermen, had been out on the Sea of Galilee all night long fishing and had caught nothing. They were tired. They were weary. They were discouraged. They were waiting around in the shallows, washing out their nets, getting ready for another day of fishing. And all of a sudden, Peter looks up, and there's a dude standing in his boat. He's like, what's going on in this moment? Why is this stranger standing in my boat? And so we pick up again in verse 3. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon. Now, I think this is no accident here. I think Jesus had this planned in the life of Simon Peter even before he was born, even before he was knit together in his mother's womb. God had set apart this time for Jesus and Simon Peter to collide in the middle of a fishing boat in the Sea of Galilee. Jesus did it on purpose. There was a plan here. So there were two clear reasons why Jesus got into Peter's boat. So I want to show you into Peter's boat. I want you to show both of them to you. Verse 3. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little from shore. To put out a little, notice that. To put out a little from shore, and then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. So the first reason that Jesus got into Peter's boat is so that he could pull back from the crowd just a little bit, and then he could have a floating pulpit. You know, I don't know when it's going to happen, but one day I'm going to preach from a boat. I mean, I've been claiming this over and over. I love the outdoors. I love to be on the water. I love the fish. And one day, I don't know when it's going to happen. Maybe you'll be there, but I'm going to preach an amazing sermon standing in a boat just like Jesus. And so Jesus is saying, hey, Peter, can you push the boat just a little bit out from the bank so that I can get away from the crowd of people and that my voice can be heard clearly. How many of you love the water? Get out there on the boat, a pontoon boat, skiing. Isn't it amazing how clearly and boldly your voice carries across water. You ever notice that? I mean, you can hear somebody talking all the way on the other side of the lake. And so Jesus, being God, being omniscient, knows this. He said, I'm going to pull back physically from the people. I'm going to have this floating pulpit. I'm going to sit down and make myself comfortable, and I'm going to speak life and truth into them, and my voice will carry across the water. Everybody can see me. Everybody can hear me in this moment. This is the first reason that Jesus got into Peter's boat, and he pushed out a little from the shore. Now, everything changes in verse number four. Now, watch this come alive. Verse number four, he moves into his second purpose. He says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, watch this now, this is the theme of the whole five-week series. This is where this title was birthed into the deep. And he says to Simon Peter, quote, put out into deep water and let down your nets or a catch. Now, I don't think that, that Jesus really had a desire for Peter to go into deep water physically, but to go into deep water spiritually. Jesus was setting him up in this moment. He was trying to say to him, Simon Peter, man, I, I want you to go somewhere with me that you've never gone before. I want you to experience the depth of life like you've never known before. I'm calling you out. You see, God had a plan to redeem all the nations of the world, and it involved his son, Jesus Christ, being born of a virgin, calling out 12 men, and one of these men, Peter, was going to be the mouthpiece, the preacher, the spokesman that would preach in Acts chapters 2, 3, and 4 on the day of Pentecost and the church would be birthed and 3,000 people would get saved all in one day. And Jesus had a divine appointment set up with Peter in this moment to press out, to push out into the deep water. You see, Jesus was saying, Peter, I'm trying to take you somewhere. There's something significant here. Get away from the shallows. Push away from the safety of the bank and trust me in your life today more than you've ever trusted me. See what's going on? Now, I find a little bit of sarcasm and humor that arises in verse number five. I love this about Jesus. I love this about Simon Peter. So look what happens in verse five. Simon Peter answers, master, make a note of that word. I want to come back to it in just a moment. Simon answered, master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Now, this word master literally means a supervisor, a supervisor, 
um, or, or boss man. So, so literally, I think, you know, we can paraphrase this in very common language. Peter just kind of turns to Jesus and he said, hey, boss man, like, look, um, <laughs> we've been fishing all night long. Uh, we, we, we know these waters. I grew up fishing here. I know where all the honey holes are. I mean, this is my grandfather's boat who passed it on to my father who passed it on to me. I mean, I know fishing. I know about these waters. If anybody can catch fish, I can catch fish. But, boss man, just because I respect you, I've just watched you teach the people. And you were mesmerizing. You had great wisdom and insight. And so he was recognizing him as a, a, an overseer or a supervisor, one who had authority in his life. And so he calls out and he says, Master. Now, I'm going to literally transla- I'm gonna translate this. Here's what I think was going on. I think Peter said, hey, boss man, hey, look, man, I just watched you for the last couple of hours, and you're absolutely amazing with people. You have this charismatic personality, and when you preach, I mean, everybody's watching and listening, but you don't know nothing about no fishing. Look, I know fishing, and I just want to tell you something. I'm going to do this for you just because I respect you as a supervisor in my life, but this let me in, let you in on the front of this. This is not going to end well for you. I think this is what Peter's saying. He's like, don't be disappointed. <laughs> Been fishing all night. This is probably not going to end well for you. Just want to let you know, big guy. This is what's going on in this moment. I sense a little sarcasm here in Peter. And then what happens just begins to unravel him at his core. Look at verse 6. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Oh, this is a good day. Got any fishermen in the house out here? I mean, you got hands up? This, then this is a good day. I mean, I mean, your nets are about to break. You're thinking, oh my, this is the mother load. Look at what I haul. Amazing. And they're excited and they're shouting and they can't believe in, in this moment. Such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Verse 7, so They signaled their partners, hello, hallelujah, would you underline, would you circle, would you make a note in the margin of your Bible right here, I love the heart of Simon Peter, because the moment it happened, the moment everything turned, the moment that the great harvest came, Peter began to shout out to his partners, hey, come and help us, oh, why are we so protect why are we so possessive of the gospel of Jesus why is the church this way why are Christian ministries this way sometimes I mean we we see a move of God we see God answering prayer we see life change we see healing we see deliverance we see financial we see great things happening but we wrap our arms around this thing and we try to protect it from everybody else like hey this is about us this is our deal has our brand on it has our title on it has our name on it has our denomination on it and we try to wrap our arms around this thing and be so possessive of a move of God. Oh, but the Spirit of God today, I believe, is calling us when the Spirit of God moves, when He answers prayers in this place, when life change happens, when healing happens, when deliverance comes, when a pouring of His Spirit comes into this place, the first thing we ought to do is shout out to every church, every denomination, every ministry partner in the city and the region say, let's all come together, let's join our hearts together and see a one-time move of the Spirit of God like never before. Don't you love that? He called for their partner he, he didn't put a monopoly on the movement of the Spirit of God. He said, come, help us. You're not going to believe. Look at the move of God. Didn't try to take credit for it. Didn't try to claim it, name it. He, he just said, hey, I need some help. Partners, come, help me in this moment. I've been praying for a great spiritual awakening revival in the city of Knoxville for 27 years now. You know when it comes? It's going to be for all of us. Not just one church, not just one denomination, not just one ministry, or the body of Christ for family. We're all in this together. John Maxwell, the great teacher and writer on leadership, says this. I love it. All the ships rise on the incoming tide. Isn't that good? Can you picture that? There's a bunch of ships tied in the harbor and the water's low. Oh, but when the tide comes in, all the ships rise on the incoming tide. When the Spirit of God moves through this city, 
all the churches will rise. All the ministries will rise. We'll all be part of the same body, same family. Praise Jesus. Let it happen, Holy Spirit. Cry of my heart. <laughs> and so he calls for his partners in verse 7. And the other boat came to help them. And they came and they filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Never been there. want to be there. I want to be in the boat when it's so full of fish it starts to sink. I want to be there when the Spirit of God pours out so heavily on a body it starts to be overwhelmed and overflow. Wow. Verse number 8 is such a major turning point in the life of Peter where Peter gets revealed. He gets uncovered. He begins to unravel at the seams. He is undone in the presence of a holy God. Watch this unfold. When Simon Peter saw this, what did he do? He fell at Jesus' knees and he said, quote, Go away from me. Say the word. Come on, like you mean it now. Go away from me, Lord. Did you see what happened? Oh, the first time. He's all sarcastic. He's all in the moment. I got this. not going to end well for you, master, supervisor, overseer, boss man. Oh, but no, 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 no master here. Now he changes his language to the Greek word, Lord, kyrios, K-Y-R-I-O-S, kyrios, which means the master, the controller, the Lord of my life, the owner of my life. Do you see what happens in this moment? All of a sudden, it changes from, from my boss man to my Lord. Oh, man, from, from the supervisor of my life to the guy who owns me. Have you ever been in that place? You've just been so overwhelmed with the person of the Holy Spirit of God. You feel so unholy, so unworthy. You fall on your knees, and like Peter, you cry out, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. You see, the more we get in the light of Jesus the more it reveals how unholy we are. And Peter is literally uncovered, revealed. You know what Peter's thinking? He even knows how to talk to fish. This is the master, the controller, the creator. of. The, he's got to be the Messiah. He is the son of God. He talks to fish and they do what he says. He is curious. He is Lord. Oh, oh my soul, could you get there today? Could you, there's a big difference between calling Jesus boss man and Lord. There's a big difference between saying, hey, I respect you as a teacher. You're the owner of my life. Big difference. This is where Peter's going in this moment. It's the first time you ever met him. He's standing in his boat. Who are you? Why are you here? You're a good teacher. Hey, leave the fish into me. Oh, my Lord. He's God. Can you feel it? Can you feel that tension, that transition, that I'm undone, I, Lord? Why is the Son of God sitting in my boat? Ever been there? What a powerful moment. Verse 9. For he and all his companions were astonished. I mean, they were overwhelmed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus says to Simon, look at this calling. Look at this invitation. Look at this mandate. Don't be afraid. From now on. Oh, did you hear him saying, it's a new day. Did you hear him say, oh, it's a new season in your life? Did you hear him say, oh, the old things have passed away. Behold, all things are come. He's saying from now on, things are not like they used to be. It's not going to be the same for you. This is a, a, a road marker in your life, Peter. Drive a stake down here. Don't ever forget this moment from now on. From now on, maybe he's saying that to you today, church. You've been a believer in Christ for a year, 10 years, 30 years, 40 years. Maybe the Spirit of God is saying to you right now, from now on, this is a strategic moment, 
I'm moving in your life like never before. I'm calling you out of the shallow water. I'm calling you out of the kiddie pool. I'm calling you into the deep with me. From now on, things are going to be different. Peter, from now on, you will fish for people. Isn't this exactly what Jesus has called us all to do as Christ followers? The Great Commission, Matthew 28. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. He's called you out to fish for men and women. Just like you, who at one point were far from God. So that they might know Him in personal relationship. From now on, new day, fresh new start. Something unique, something different. You're going to fish for people. Verse 11. How do you respond to that? (laughs) How do you respond to the Son of God saying, it's a new day, new season from now on, you're going to fish for people? There's only one way to respond, the way they did in verse 11. So they pulled their boats up on the shore, and they left everything. They left, what what did they leave? They left left everything. Boats, oars, nets, peanut butter crackers, mom and dad, family, career. They left everything. And what did they do? They followed him. You have no idea how significant those last two verse words are. And I'm getting ready to unpack it for you follow me it speaks so to my heart because you see you have to understand first century Jewish culture because in first century Jewish culture every young Jewish boy grew up with the hopes and dreams that one day when they turned to man they could go and present themselves to a great rabbi a great teacher And the rabbi or the teacher would say, yes, you can be my disciple. Come follow me. But it didn't happen for everybody. Because only the smartest, only the sharpest, only the prettiest were ever chosen or selected. And so these these young boys, their whole life, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, they're preparing, they're reading, they're studying, they're growing, they're maturing in every way. And their lifelong dream is that when they turn 13, they have a celebration. They call it a bar mitzvah today. And when you're a Jewish boy, when you turn 13, you become a man. And at 13, you go and you choose a teacher, a rabbi, a great man of God, and you present yourself to this man of God, and you say, can I be your disciple? Would you choose me? And the rabbi would examine your life, And he would say yes or no. Watch this. (laughs) For the ones that were not good enough, smart enough, sharp enough, the rabbi would say, hey, sorry, you don't make the cut. Just go back home, and whatever your father does, do that. If your dad's a carpenter, learn how to cut some wood. If your dad's a stonemason, learn how to lay some block. If your dad's a fisherman, learn how to make a net and start fishing with your dad. You are never going to make it. You don't measure up. You're not smart enough, sharp enough. So, at some point in Peter's life, in James and John's life, they got rejected. At some point in their lives, the 13-year-old boys, they went to some rabbi and said, can I be your disciple? And he said, I'm sorry, you're not going to make it. Just go fish or something. So this is why this is so powerful. 
so significant. Why Peter is so overwhelmed, so undone, because this is the teacher of all teachers. This is the rabbi of all rabbis. And he looks at Peter and he says, you're good enough, you're sharp enough, you're smart enough. I choose you. I want you to be my disciple. Follow me. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful today? Aren't you thankful today that Jesus chose you? When I think about my life and I look back on my journey, never this greatest student, never the greatest with vocabulary, not very articulate at times. I, I get overwhelmed, undone when, when I realize that God has chosen me to be a servant of the kingdom. He's chosen you to be a servant of the kingdom. And so all of a sudden, this guy who got thrown away, this guy who felt second class his whole life, this guy who didn't feel like he measured up, this guy who felt that lifelong rejection now has been chosen by the rabbi of all rabbis. And he is absolutely undone. This is why a guy like Peter, who is illiterate, he is uneducated. According to Acts chapter 4, he's an unlearned and ignorant man. He cannot read or write. And this is why at this moment, he's so overwhelmed with the love of Jesus, he leaves everything and follows him into the deep. I'll never forget it for me. A 22-year-old young man just got married and my sweet bride, Melissa, graduated from college. And I was working uh, as a student pastor in a church, just trying to figure this thing out. It was on a Sunday morning, and I don't remember the sermon text. But all I can remember is the invitation song. And so in that moment, I'm so overwhelmed with what God is doing in me. And, and we just begin to sing, wherever... He leaves, I'll go. Wherever He leaves, I'll go. I'll follow my Christ who loves me so. Wherever I'll go. You remember that singing with me right now? Come on. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Lift your voice to him. Wherever he leads, I'll go. I'll follow my Christ. I'll follow my Christ. Who loves me so, wherever he leads, I'll go. I remember singing that song and saying to Jesus, I mean it. From this moment on, from now on, Jesus, wherever you lead me, I'll go. And this was the day I gave my life, surrendered my life to full-time ministry. Never looked back. 35 years ago, still charging on. Good days, bad days, on the mountaintop, in the valley. I was singing that song, wherever you lead, Lord, I'll go. Wherever you lead, I'll go. I'll follow my Christ who loves me, so wherever he leads, I'll go. And, and I think this is where God is taking us now. This is where Jesus is stirring this morning. I think maybe for some of you, for the very first time ever, you're wrestling with this. So I take my first step and just give Jesus my heart. Just give him your heart. Just come to know him and the personal Savior of your life. Just confess your sin and say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I'm desperate for you. Save me. Choose me. Give me heaven. And you take that first step. Maybe for some of you, it's taking a next step in believer's baptism. Going public with your faith like we saw 10 last weekend do here in the baptistry. Maybe it's for you getting connected in a life group in deep community, walking deeply with other believers for an extended period of time, grow mature in the faith. 
Maybe for some of you, it's the beginning to serve, serve, serve the body here in North Star, serve the city outside the wall, serve, be the hands and feet of Jesus for the very first time. Maybe for some of you, it's a call. He's getting ready to wreck you. He's getting ready to rock your world. Maybe it's a part-time ministry, a full-time ministry. Maybe God's calling you to, to sell your house and pack up everything you got and move to the other side of the globe. I don't know. But what I sense is, what I sense is, what I believe is, is that it's today, this morning, in this room, there are people, there are people watching online, there are men of God at Morgan County, there are people who are, are hearing this message maybe for the first time with fresh ears, and maybe you sense that God has something more for you, that God is calling you to move away from the shallows, to get away from the safety of the bank, to begin to wade out, to dive into deep water, where, where not only you can't touch the bottom, you can't even see the bottom. And if Jesus doesn't come through for you, you're not going to make it. Oh, but what a great place to be where the Spirit of God can move and use you in such a powerful way. You'll never get over it. And He'll use your life to transform hundreds, maybe thousands, with the gospel of Christ. I just believe, I just believe that Jesus is calling some people into the deep today. Maybe for the very first time in your life. So I want to ask you a couple questions as we get ready to respond. Because I think the Lord wants to hear from you today. Peter left his boats, nets, career, financial means, father, follow the Lord. But what would it look like for you to leave everything, anything that would hinder you from serving Jesus fully? Maybe an unhealthy relationship that you've been in for a while. you just, you got to walk away. Maybe it's a pet sin that you confessed them all, but not this one. You've released all of them, but not this one. Is it maybe a stronghold in your life that you've never been able to get away from? Is it a fleshly desire for wealth or a title or position or power or fame or a name for yourself? Is it a life of cover-up? I don't know. What, what is it? What is Jesus calling you to walk away from? That you would leave anything, everything that would hinder you from serving him fully with your life. And then secondly, just to follow him in the deep waters of life and ministry. Just get out of that kiddie pool and get in a deep place with Jesus. A place when you're in over your head. <laughs> Ever been in over your head with Jesus? It's a little scary, to be honest with you. It, this is where I was when North Star started. I was in a way over my head. Didn't have a fat clue what I was doing. But he was there, and he was calling, and I knew it. I was just like, well, man, just dive in. Have you ever been in over your head? So here's what I want to ask. What would it look like for you to push out to the deep water with Jesus? It could look like a million different things. What would it look like for you this afternoon, tomorrow morning, this week? What would it look like for you? How would you flesh out pushing out to the deep water with Jesus? Maybe it means a job change. Maybe it means a career change. Maybe it means living in another city. Maybe, maybe God's calling you to move to Knoxville. You're in the house today. You're visiting. You're praying. You're, maybe God's calling you to move to Knoxville. It's the Holy Land, I'm telling you. God's here. Fish are here. Maybe you're watching online. God's calling you to Knoxville. North Side. I don't, maybe he's calling you to sell your house or to go reach a nation. Maybe he's calling you to, to adopt a, a special needs international baby. Wow. How much like Jesus is that? Maybe he's calling you to foster a child that really needs somebody to pour into their lives right now. Just like William Bell did at the beginning of our story today. I don't know what it is for you, but God knows. And he's going to let you know. He's not going to tell me. He's going to tell you. He's probably not going to tell you through me, but he's going to tell you with me. We'll walk through it together. And so what could this look like? What could this look like for you to move out of the shadows, away from the safety of the bank, in the deep water with Jesus? Last question, but very powerful. What would you attempt for the kingdom of God if you knew you couldn't fail? That's a big question, isn't it? That's deep water. You. Individually, own this. Every seat in the house. Everybody online. What would you attempt for the kingdom of God if you knew you couldn't fail? Can you write that down? 
Could you articulate that to someone else? Could you say it to somebody else? What would you attempt for the kingdom of God if you knew you couldn't fail? This is deep water. This is where we're going. Into the deep with Jesus. So we're going to respond. Every time Jesus ever taught, he always called people to action. There's always a response. There was always a, a step. And so I just want today to invite you. We are a people who believe deeply in the power of prayer. We pray in this place the God of heaven hears us and begins to move into action. The altars are prepared for you. Comfortable place to come and kneel. Safe place to come and kneel. Stand in the altar. We'll have prayer warriors here, staff, pastors, elders to pray with you, to pray over you. But whatever he said to you today, I want you to act on it. Take that first step into the deep with Jesus. I pray that this will be a road marker, a turning point for someone in the house, maybe many. That it will start things in action that you'll never get over. Ready to respond? I'm just going to ask uh, that we quietly stand to our feet all over the house, heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. Just, just make a little imaginary circle around yourself right now, not thinking about what anybody else is going to say or do or think, where you're going for lunch today, none of those things. Just, just, for, just for a minute or two, could you just begin to marinate and ask these questions of yourself? What would it look like for me to go deep with Jesus? And what would I attempt for the kingdom of God if I knew I couldn't fail? So right now, I just want to ask you, if you're here today or you're watching online, you'd say, wow, Pastor, that word was for me. I needed to hear that. The Spirit of God stirred my mind and my heart in some way. Maybe not even sure what that means yet. But I sense that God is doing something fresh and new in me. I sense that God is calling me into the deep. Would you just lift your hand up? Nobody looking in there. Hold it up good and high all over the house. Online, Morgan County. Praise the Lord, you can put it down. Can we just act on this? Can we respond to this? And whatever God says to you, come today. Be prayed for, prayed over. Lay it at the feet of Jesus. Take the next step into the deep water with him. You'll never regret it. Father, we praise you. We celebrate your goodness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for wrecking us today in a good way, reminding us of your unconditional love, reminding us of of a lost world, reminding us of the need for us to be the hands and feet of, of the gospel, to go with the gospel. Lord, I pray that you would make us men and women of courage and boldness, that we would attempt great things for you and expect great things from you. Father, I pray even now for for all those within the sound of my voice. Lord, I pray for those who lifted their hand. Lord, stir their hearts. Draw them unto yourself. Lord, Father, those that maybe didn't have the courage to even lift the hand, but they know that you're speaking to them today. So I pray, God, that you would help us to run to you, to kneel in your presence, to cry out to you, Father, to start the journey into the deep. Woo us, pursue us. Lead us to be obedient in this moment, knowing that our greatest days are just ahead. We pray it now in the powerful and sweet name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, as we begin to worship, come, would you? Come now, respond, pray, be prayed for, be prayed over. This is your moment.
Hallelujah, you have entered my heart. You have set me apart. I love you, Lord. And how many today are so thankful that Jesus chose you, set you apart, filled you with the person of the Holy Spirit, empowered and gifted you for the sake of the kingdom? I don't know about you, I had church today. I really have felt the presence of God in the house of the Lord today. What a great start to this new series, a vision series, Into the Deep. Uh, so when you make your way out today, uh, we want every one of you to grab one of these. If you're even a first-time guest, we want you to take one. We've got plenty. It's kind of our vision guide as we leave 2020 and move into 2021. Uh, it talks about who we are, what we believe, what we're trusting God for uh, in this new season that we're running hard into. And say, so I want you to be here every weekend. This is going to be so powerful, uh, so profound. I really sense that God's up to something big calling us into the deep with him um, I, the week you cannot miss at all none of y'all get off on not this next week but the next week all right week three of this uh it's a word that i believe god gave me unlike none other that in most of my years of ministry and it's for you it's for the church it's for us uh, we're going to talk about that day what it looks like to throw the nets out the right side of the boat it'll make sense to you then but you cannot miss week three I believe the Lord's going to do something profound in you and through you. So grab one of these guys when you make your way out. Hey, if you didn't come today, but you want prayer, uh, you want encouragement, you want direction, our staff pastors will hang around up here in the front afterwards, so be sure to come up to one of us. Hey, church, man, I love y'all. So thankful to be able to call myself your pastor. God bless you. You are sent. <laughs>